Thank you so much uh, for uh, speaking with us today. So my first question is Hong Kong, in terms of entrepreneurship in specifically, Hong Kong has been criticized sometimes in being not um, as far ahead as it should be um, in uh, the field of entrepreneurship and in startups. You know, there's these hubs that we see in the city, but some criticize that Hong Kong government hasn't been doing enough. and. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you your perspective on that and what are the takeaways that you have from this conference so far um, in, in, in these terms? Um, thanks, Audrey. So, I mean, I've, I've heard the criticism put even more starkly than that. I've yeah. heard the criticism that Hong Kong doesn't do entrepreneurship or doesn't do it well. Um, the way you put it, I actually agree with, which is it could do more. Mm -hmm. But I think the suggestion that Hong Kong doesn't do it or doesn't do it well, I think is incorrect. Um, okay. I think there's a lot of evidence of entrepreneurship in Hong Kong. Uh, I think there's a lot of expertise and a lot of energy. Yes, it could do more. And I think the, some of the, the reason why uh, the, the, the perception exists is because it's a bit fragmented in Hong Kong. So we have Science Park, we have Cyberport, we have the various universities and various other industries, but it's all a bit fragmented. Mm -hmm. And I think perhaps what Hong Kong needs is a bit more coordination. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue, of course, is the uh, relationship with mainland China. Um, the fact that a lot of manufacturing industry has moved from Hong Kong into mainland China. So there is the, and there's a lot of biotech and pharmaceutical industries in mainland, but not in Hong Kong. And so mm -hmm. there is this perception that in order to meet with industry and interact with industry, it's got to be in the mainland, and that always introduces a level of complexity. Mm -hmm. So I think it's true that Hong Kong could do more. I think the university sector in general has a massive amount to contribute to mm -hmm. that, including the University of Hong Kong, and I'd, nothing would please me more than for the University of Hong Kong to be uh, leading uh, the, the university sector in this respect. Right, right. Um, the reason for today's event is to precisely start achieving some of this coordination, bringing together of like minds, mm -hmm. uh, getting some role models and some um, uh, people for our students to uh, learn from and understand what they did right and what they did wrong right. so that they can uh, achieve similar successes. Right, and so in your opinion, what role should the university be playing in the future of the development of um, entrepreneurship and the startup um, community in Hong Kong? So I think it should, the university, this university and indeed all the universities in Hong Kong should be providing an environment where um, the, the basic needs of entrepreneurship are uh, underlined and, if, mm -hmm. and, and I think one of those you've heard discussed at length today is the willingness to fail. Mm -hmm. There is an obsession with success. Um, uh, I think Asian students in general and it's certainly true of Hong Kong students very focused on success, very focused on qualifications. Um, the track record in Hong Kong is extraordinary so one statistic that I like quoting is that the likelihood of a Hong Kong U graduate getting a job within six months is 99.7 percent. Wow. So they're virtually guaranteed a job. So if you, you can go to school in Hong Kong, go to university in Hong Kong, get a job in Hong Kong, why would you want to take risks? Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do anything outside the box? Why yeah. would you want to think laterally or do something inherently risky? Because you have this guaranteed conveyor belt to success. Mm -hmm. And I think some of what the universities can do is say it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail as long as you learn lessons. Mm -hmm. It's okay to take risks. It's okay to do something which is a little bit unconventional. Right. And if we can start to, in the course of our uh, undergraduate degrees and, and, in, and other degrees, provide some examples, get some of these, these great people that we like the ones we've got uh, here today to come and speak to the students, illustrate what they did, illustrate the fact that in many cases they did have several failures before they had their successes for which they're now known. Mm -hmm. I think encouraging that kind of culture is a, is a role that universities can and should play. Mm -hmm. I think that that also uh, brings to mind you know, the issue that some founders have spoken about, whether it's the right thing for students to jump into doing their own startup and doing their own idea, or first getting a little bit of experience and then um, sort of uh, with that experience starting their own thing. Um, you, you were telling me about this earlier. I, I was just wondering if you could um, repeat the, the, the points that you made. About yeah, I mean, I suppose, well, my answer to your question, uh, thinking about it, was that, the, that I don't think there is one size fits all. I don't think there is one particularly prescriptive way of becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. To me, the, what matters is when do you identify the issue or the problem that you really want to address? When, when is it in your life that you 
you you become certain that this is you, this is the thing for you. This is what's going to mm -hmm. really drive you or occupy you and, and give you satisfaction. For some people, that will happen at university. Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's the classic example with with Facebook. Yeah. Um, but but for other people, it may be much later. Mm -hmm. And I think there is something to be said for getting some experience in the world and getting some uh, some working experience and maybe gaining a bit of credibility and, and often contacts and financial wherewithal to put you in a better position to then pursue your idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it happens early and you have the energy and the vision and the passion to do it, uh, I wouldn't stop anyone from doing it. So I don't think I would say that it's best as an undergraduate or best after 10 years working. I, I, I don't think there is a one formula. model. Mm -hmm. And well, one of the one of the issues that you've taken up recently is I, I see the pin that you're wearing is the he for she movement, and um, we're all very proud that HK University, well Hong Kong U, has been the first university to join the yeah. ten by ten uh, by ten program. Um, one of the things that um, you've mentioned as well, and that I interests you know some people, is that. When we talk about so startups and innovation, entrepreneurship, it's usually quite a um, male-dominated sort of world. And I was just wondering um, what your perspectives on this issue are. As yeah, well. I mean, I think it would be very, it would be a great pity if that became self-fulfilling. Gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so my my reason for joining He for She and for thinking that it's something that I want to put energy into is really mainly concerned with the university sector and particularly. Mm -hmm. Um, leadership, uh, higher levels of leadership in the university sector. So you've heard me say the statistic, which is that in the eight government-funded uh, higher education institutions in Hong Kong, there are 110 posts at Dean or above, and mm -hmm. currently only eight of those posts are held by women. Yeah. So we have 50% of the population, about 53% of our student population, 53% of our junior staff, but only 8% of our leaders. And that's something that I personally feel we need to understand and mm -hmm. tackle. So that's very much my brief on he for she. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess uh, bringing the topic to today, I felt irritated in the first session this morning. I kept my irritation to myself um, because there were lots of other people asking questions. But the mentions of women were all about being someone's wife or their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I wanted to stand up and say, hang on a minute, what about women as entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. Because I think it would be shameful to think that half the population can't contribute to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You're right, there is a tendency for the, the, uh, the current entrepreneurs to be male, and there's a tendency for entrepreneurship to be seen as a rather macho, gung-ho sort of male type activity. Yes. Uh, I think that needs to be challenged. Mm -hmm. I think women are every bit as creative and sometimes more. Um, and so what, what we need to provide, perhaps again we can do this at a university level, but we need to provide the environment where women can flourish as, as entrepreneurs as well. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you on that. And my final question would be, you know, we, uh, we have had this amazing, we're having this amazing successful uh, forum, Dreamcatchers mm. HKU. Um, I'm wondering what is next? What's the next step for the university? Maybe next year or what are some of the things the university is looking into to, to continue in this direction? So I, I think this is, this is the big question for today actually. And we were just, I was just talking about this with some of my colleagues at lunch. Um, the, so this is great. We're delighted with the uh, buy-in that we've had to the session, both in terms of uh, people willing to speak and contribute mm -hmm. and also people willing to attend. It was a complete sellout. We could have yeah. probably uh, uh, given out twice as many tickets and we've this is the biggest uh, auditorium we've got in the university and it's over full and we could have probably filled it again. Right. So that's terrific, but you're right, what's next? What's, how do we harness that into something really meaningful? So I think we'll have future events like this, maybe slightly different with a slightly different focus. Mm -hmm. um, the, the need for coordination I think is a, is a real one and so we were talking about what, web, what websites and what, we, what forums we can use to keep these conversations going. Mm -hmm. the, I hope that from today there'll be a whole spread of conversations that have started today that will continue that we don't necessarily need to manufacture at the university but we need to provide leadership to the future generations of students. Mm -hmm. um, we need to uh, perhaps focus on particular issues. You know, for example, one that came out this morning is everybody talks about China as being the market. Yes. Of course, it's a huge market, but as soon, that's easy to say. But actually getting involved in the market, understanding it and dealing with the, the various aspects of that market is a science in itself. And so mm -hmm. uh, maybe we need to provide more, uh, more uh, information on those kinds of issues. But you're right, the, the, it'd been very, it would have been very difficult to talk to any of my colleagues 
up until today about what are we going to do next because everything's been focused on today. Mm -hmm. But right now, that's absolutely the shift that we need. So this cannot be a one-off event. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine it'll be something like this will be an annual event, but in between, I think we'll have other activities as well, focused at students and staff. I see. Professor Matheson, thank you so much for speaking with me. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you.